devilish fears of the dark haunted Alison Gapabotki's childhood. At four years old, she was abused as a foster child. Her loving mother had been hospitalized with spinal meningitis. There were no relatives available to take care of the children, and neither was their estranged father. And so Allison, her sister, and brother were sent out to two different foster homes. The family reunited, but for Allison, the intense abuse left deep emotional scars. I was catatonic. I was uh, unable to comprehend what had ha happened to me. Um, I couldn't speak. I was a, a preschooler. I did talk before I went in, but I couldn't speak afterwards. My first recollection truly is um, being just fearful of, of dark, of dark places. I slept with lights on all the time. But Allison found an escape. She developed a fantasy world through countless hours of reading and writing. I started writing my first scripts when I was a really little girl. I, I, I created these scenarios of a perfect life, of perfect parents, perfect siblings, perfect um, world, you know, and, 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 that's, and that's how I got through that time. I, I created my reality. In her teen years, rebellion and spiritual emptiness filled her life. By the time she was 16, Allison was married and pregnant. He was 18. At 15, I ran away from home and went to South Carolina and married this fellow, 15 years old. I didn't know who he was. I had no concept of character judgment at that age. I didn't have an earthly father's love. I didn't know a heavenly father's love. I had an emptiness that longed for somebody to say, I love you, Allison, and I will take care of you, and I will be this Prince Charming that you need and want. But her teen husband was no Prince Charming. In fact, her violent marriage ended in divorce. She filled her adult life with live-in relationships and alcohol and drugs. She desperately tried to fill that spiritual void she felt in her heart. So I was out there like a, you know, like a ship without a, without a sail or without a rudder. I was just, you know, going here and there and hitting one dead end after another. Her private life was a disaster, but her professional career was in high gear. She was one of the country's first full-figured models, and she was also a professional fundraiser for nonprofit organizations. I was being paid to, to throw $1,000 plate dinners for the governor of California. I mean, I found myself in this awesome position to have you know, this, the, the, a lot of fun. People envied me. People thought I had this great life because I had really developed a really great career. I was working, um, but there was an emptiness. In her emptiness, Allison attempted suicide. And I sent my son to my mother's house for the weekend, and I swallowed, uh, I owe 150 or some odd pills, Valium, Quaaludes, everything, and it would have killed me. A friend of mine suspected something wasn't right, and she came and broke into my house and found me and took me to the hospital, and I had to have my stomach pumped. The deep void in her heart kept growing bigger. It was hitting against a dead-end road one time after another. I would keep trying things, and nothing worked. Relationships didn't work. There was just nothing there, and, it was not, and I was not in touch with, with, with who I was and what I wanted to do and where I was going in my life. It was a Wednesday evening when Allison decided to take a walk. She wanted to clear her mind. Well, then she noticed some people going into a church across the street. Well, Allison felt drawn to go inside. And before she knew it, Allison was sitting in the balcony. And I was the only person in the balcony. Nobody else was up there. I looked down. I saw people down, you know, in, sitting in the sanctuary. I figured, I'll be okay up here. Nobody's going to come and get me. I was really sobbing, though, so I, at least I felt like I really was. I thought, somebody's going to come up here and find me and wonder who this crazy woman is up here crying in the church balcony. And this pastor that started speaking, his message that night was for me. It was a message just for me. There was a church filled with people, but his message was for me. And it was a message about being lost and being broken and having an empty place in our heart that only God can fill. And if you don't have God filling that place, what do you fill it with? You fill it with empty pursuits. You fill it with relationships. You fill it with drugs, with alcohol, with overwork, with wrong decisions, wrong choices. And he, would, he told me this, and I said, I was agreeing with all of it. Absolutely, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing this. And at that moment, I knew that there had to be a big change in my life. I had to turn around. Allison met with the pastor the very next day. And after that meeting, her life began to change. It was definitely a change. 
all of a sudden there was a, you know, it's not like life suddenly gets wonderfully better because I still have a whole lot of challenges in my life. But there was a peace that you don't have, you know, without Christ. There was a peace there that maybe I don't have all the answers. Maybe I'm going to really mess things up. Maybe I'm going to hit a few more dead-end roads here. However, there is a foundation there. There's a guide there. There's a navigator there. There is somebody there that will help me. And that ability to have that help brought me peace. Allison is now happily married, and her life has made an incredible U-turn. In fact, her love of writing that helped her through the darkest years of her childhood is now part of her amazing career. She compiles inspiring, dramatic stories of how God is working in people's lives. Her book series is titled, God Allows U-Turns. And it's not just other people's stories that she finds so inspiring. Now Allison gets to share her own U-Turn story. I've committed so many mistakes and so many sins. And I talk to people that say, you know, I, I, he'll never forgive me. I can never get out of this hole that I'm in, and that is so wrong. His character is loving and forgiving. And when we, can, and when we honestly can come to him with a repentant heart, that's a real key, is to say that, you know, I'm sorry for what I've done. Please change me. Get me back on the right road. He'll do it for us.